It was an interesting season with the Lyman this year. I decided late in May to make it look better. Now it is running the best it ever has, thanks to some helping hands. Just look at that Total Boat Lust Varnish. This is just the other day. I'm so glad I took the time to restore the decks and windshield properly. As I went through the cut between Twilight and Atlantis Islands, there was Nibbles, a Hutchinson utility. You gotta love Chippewa Bay. It doesn't disappoint. Just the night before, at the other end of Oak Island, it was this 24-foot lineman, Noel's Ark. And of course, my boat, Compromise, is a 26-foot lineman sleeper soft top. Okay, you've seen where I am now. Now let's see how I got there. Season 3. Episode 3. Let's get to it. My earliest memory is riding in my grandfather's boat. Arm over the side, hand in the spray. I've spent much of the rest of my life chasing this feeling. All of that has led to this. The Wooden Boat Experience. Jay's boat is done and in the water. Now it was time for me to work on my Lyman. What could it need? So far, I am very happy with what I'm finding underneath the varnish. There's the spots I knew about, like right there. There's a little bit of a funky spot right there. But overall, so far so good. Now, I do realize the other side has a little bit more of an issue than this side. I can't remember who commented last year saying to tape off when caulking. Brilliant. The tape was pulled away carefully right after the life caulk was pushed into the joint and smoothed with a finger. The life caulk needs to be pushed into the joint. It adheres better that way.
Oh, and this boat showed up. More on that another time. Don't worry, I'll tell you. She's my work. Although you don't need to sand the lust varnish between coats, here I am sanding it to make it smoother. This is necessary if you want a good finish. This was done after coat of varnish number five. Two more coats were then added for a total of seven. A few more things happened before Compromise was ready to launch. A section of wood was replaced at the gunnel the name was painted on using total gold for the center of the lettering. The outline was done with sign paint that I had laying around. Three coats of varnish were added to the transom after the name. A Dutchman was used to fix the transom. Sanding, then two coats of topside paint and a boot stripe. Sanding, and then two coats of Total Boat Spartan bottom paint. Yeah. You're good. Yeah. Then it was time to launch. 24 days after I stripped the decks, summer slipping away is a great motivator, and the results were definitely worth it. This may be where the impeller damage happened. I'm noticing the boat doesn't seem to be far enough in the water for the water pickup. Just two days later, the two Limans were together on the river looking good. Hugh had his speedster out, a Garwood speedster, which started life as a Chris Craft. Hey, Hugh! And there was a nice Hutchinson. It was a beautiful 4th of July. I got to breathe a sigh of relief because the Lyman was in the water. You know it's summer at the river when you're swimming off the boat and it doesn't take your breath away. Everything was going so well. We surfed on July 12th, and then the mechanical trouble began that night. And it took a while to sort it out. We went down a lot of roads before we found the right one, 
although some of these were due to be changed anyway. The engine was running warmer than usual. First I checked for any blockage in the water flow. Then I changed the water pump impeller, but the water pump was still leaking on the back, so I ended up getting a whole new water pump. As I think you can hear, that was only part of the problem with the engine. Be careful of which way the pump arrives to you if the impeller is installed. This one was set up for a left-hand engine. Mine is right-hand. Still, it's not running and starting well. Is it one problem or two? By the time Gary Green was done with me, I knew a lot more about my carburetor than before. His wife thinks we're both crazy. More on Gary in another episode coming up soon. I finally got the sewing machine tuned up with the help of Mary Knapp and created a new top for the lineman. After Gary worked his magic, things went really well for a couple of weeks. Then the starting issues began again. After changing plugs, coil, resistor, load testing the batteries, thinking it could be a bunch of different things. It actually ended up being the starter, which I think was the original starter. Whether it had been rebuilt or not, I don't know. But once I changed the starter, all the problems were solved. For now. We are back in action. Since then, it has been smooth sailing. Sparkles. There he is. Speckles, can you say welcome to the wooden boat experience? No, huh? <laughs>